So, we will be talking about the course on probability theory and its applications. Somehow, when you utter the word probability um, to a layman, um, it does not sound very uh, familiar or you know one does not feel very comfortable with it, but uh, my attempt in this course would be that at the end of the course you feel that you okay, you can uh, understand what all goes behind computing the probability of an event. So, basically uh, probability theory is estimating the possibility of outcome of an event. So, this word possibility that uh, what are the, po uh, how possible, how probable the event is, is, is actually um, done by counting. And so, therefore, uh, before I start giving you axioms of probability theory, I would like to um, begin with the basic concepts of counting, because that helps you in estimating the, uh, po uh, the possibility of the occurrence of an event. And I will try to explain what we mean by an event and so on. So, as we go on, hopefully, the, you will understand all these terms. So, uh, let me just begin why. So, the, therefore, the, the first topic I am going to talk about is counting and I will start with an example. So, suppose there is a small community, which consists of 12 women and each of whom has two children. Now, if one woman and one of her children, so it has to be the pair, a woman and her child. So, if the pair has to be chosen as mother and child of the year, how many different choices are possible? So, let us just, this is a very simple way of counting. So, what I am saying here is that first experiment would be number of possibilities of the, um, the first experiment would be choosing the mother. Out of the 12 women, we choose one of the uh, women as the mother of the year. And so, uh, the number of possible outcomes is 12, because there are 12 women and one of them will uh, be appointed or chosen as the uh, woman of the year. And then we will, the second experiment would be selecting one of her children as the year, as the child of the year. So, once you have chosen the uh, mother of the year, then um, she has two children. So, only one of them can qualify to be uh, the ch uh, year of the child, I mean child of the year. So, therefore, uh, the possible outcomes are two. So, then we say that the total number of choices is 24. So, I sort of broke up this um, uh, event, I will call it event of choosing the mother and child of the year, by first saying that I will choose the mother and then one of her children would be chosen as the uh, year child of the year. Right? So, therefore, the number of uh, choices are 24. Right? So, uh, if, if now I want to um, sort of uh, formulate this into the basic principle of counting, then the basic principle says that if there are two experiments to be performed. And uh, experiment one results in any one of m possible outcomes. So, I have way of uh, finding out that whatever my first experiment and the possible outcomes of that event are m. So, for example, here my first experiment was choosing the mo year, uh, mother of the year and since there are 12 women out of which I have to choose the mother of the year. So, there were 12 possible outcomes of this experiment any of the 12 women could have been chosen as the mother of the year. So, the first experiment results in m possible outcomes. Now, for each outcome of experiment 1, that means for each possible out, each of the m possible outcomes here, then I want to know what are the possible outcomes of the second experiment. So, in that example, uh, the mother had two children. So, it could only be one of the two children, who could be chosen as the mother of the year. So, now here we will say that, if for each outcome of experiment 1, there are n possible outcomes of experiment 2, then together there are m n possible outcomes of the two experiments. Right. So, uh, I hope this, uh, this the once you understand this basic principle of computing, of counting, then you know things become simple, because you have to first, uh, first find out what are the possible outcomes. And then we will talk about, when, uh, talk, when we define the concept of an event, then we will try to find out, how, in how many ways a particular event can occur. So, here the total number of this thing are this. Now, if you want to generalize this concept of counting. So, this will be generalized basic principle of counting. And here we will now say that, suppose I have r experiments which could be 1, 2, 3, whatever the number. And then again, we will start saying, first one, the first experiment results in n 1 possible outcomes. Okay. 
So, the first experiment results in n 1 possible outcomes. Now, for each possible n 1 outcomes of the first experiment, right? for each possible n 1 outcome of the first experiment, there are n 2 possible outcomes of the second experiment. Right. And then, the third stage we will then count for each possible outcomes of the first two experiments, right? because two experiments have taken place. So, for each possible outcome of the first and the second, that means, now you have n 1 possible outcomes of the first experiment, n 2 for each of the experiment outcome here, you have n 2 possible outcomes. So, total number of outcomes become n 1 n 2. Now, for each possible <coughs> uh, outcome of n 1 n 2, the third experiment, <coughs> the possible outcomes will be n 3 and so on. So, you will go on counting this and therefore, by a simple um, arithmetic, you can see that the total number of possible outcomes would be n 1 into n 2 into n r. That means, at each for each experiment, whatever the possible outcomes, you will multiply them all. So, this gives you the generalized principle of computing. So, let us look up at this example, example 1.2. How many 8 place license plates are possible, if first 4 places are to be occupied by letters and last 4 by numbers. That means, the first 4 can be any of the alphabet A, B, C, D. So, there were 26 choices for the first place for first four places and then for the last four have to be uh, the numbers. So, which means they can be any of the uh, digits 0, 1, 2 up to 9. right? So, now again as I uh, quoted the, uh, the generalized principle of counting. So, number of uh, the first experiment would be choosing the first place of the license plate. right? So, then I have 26 choices because 26 alphabets are there. Then again, uh, for each of the alphabet I choose here, for each of the 26 alphabets I choose here, I can again choose uh, the 26 alphabets again. right? If I have a letter A here, for example, then I can choose any of the A, B, C, D 26 alphabets uh, here. So, again the next outcome, that means the outcome for each outcome here, there are again 26 choices of the second uh, experiment and so on. So, again for the third, that means now when once I have chosen the first two alphabets here, then again for uh, any uh, each of these outcomes 26 into 26, I can again choose in the third place any of the 26 alphabets. So, then the third choices again the number of uh, possible outcomes are uh, the number of cho choices are 26 and say the same argument goes for the fourth place. And similarly, for the numbers, if I have chosen one of the 10 numbers here, then again after having chosen all this, I can again choose any of the 10 numbers here and then in the third place also any of the 10 numbers and so on. So, this will be the and you can just see I have left a question mark for you to compute the number, it will be a big number. So, this many license plates can be there, if you uh, have this kind of arrangement that the first four places have to be occupied. So, it is a 8 letter license plate number and so the first 4 places have to be occupied by alphabets and the last 4 by digits. right? Now, um, if I change the experiment and I say that repetition of letters and numbers is not permitted. So, the moment I say that once I have chosen a letter here, then the same letter will not be repeated here, here or here. So, then uh, my way of counting will be this. Now, for the first place, I have any of the 26 choices, any of the 26 letters can be um, chosen here, but once I have chosen a letter here, then that same letter is not permitted to be chosen here. So, now my choice at the, for the second experiment for every possible outcome here uh, goes down to 25 because whatever alphabet I have chosen here, I cannot choose it again. So, therefore, my choices here are 25. And once I have chosen an alphabet for the first place and the second place, two alphabets have been selected, then both these are not allowed to be chosen again. So, therefore, my choice for the third place would come down to 24. So, out of 26, two letters have been already chosen and they are not allowed to be chosen again. So, this will choice will be 24 and then similarly, at the fourth place, I will be having a choice of 23. 
So, you can if you just uh, keep using this generalized principle of counting, which I enumerated some time ago, then you see uh, this is how you will write down the possible outcomes. And similarly, for the numbers, uh, for the first place I will have choice of 10, but once I choose a number here, then my choice is limited to 9. And after this, again I can only choose out of the 8, which are not repeated, which have not been already chosen. And then similarly, for the fourth place, my choice will be left limited to 7 um, numbers, which have not been repeated. So, this is the kind of, so the generalized principle of counting helps you to uh, come out with the possible number of outcomes of an experiment right? or uh, event here, what you want to say, because this was uh, as I am counting, I am saying that this is 8 experiments choice of each letter for the each place of the license plate and the choice of a number, I counted as uh, experiment. So, I had 8 experiments here and used the generalized principle of counting to find out the possible number of outcomes. Right? Now, another possible uh, another way of counting uh, is done by through permutations and combinations. And let me now here try to explain the difference between uh, permutations and combinations. So, here let us say we have collection of three novels and so I will just say that the authors are A, B and C, then um, uh, two mathematics books and again I will distinguish them or differentiate them by the authors and call the authors as D and E and one physics book um, and I will call the author as P. Okay. So, um, there are six books and since I am uh, distinguishing the books by the authors. So, it is not just novels, I am saying that the, uh, I mean the authors are A, B and C. So, they are different novels I am distinguishing. Similarly, I am di uh, differentiating between the two uh, mathematics novels and of course, there is one physics book. So, the question is how many arrangements are possible if the books are to be distinguished by the authors. So, I am, I am wanting to make uh, uh, arrangements of these books and uh, arrangements would be uh, di, uh, would be differentiated uh, because uh, the i'll be uh, i'll be uh, uh, referring to the books by the authors so it's not just novels or a mathematics book so therefore possible arrangements now here again let us just uh, say that um, we are um, yeah okay right so here that means in the first place we, if we now count the thing, then uh, that means I can I can say that there are six places, right? So now the choice for the first place. That means I'm just arranging the books like this in a in a row, suppose. So the choice for the first place would be uh, any of the six books, right? Because I'm differentiating the books by the authors. So therefore, for the first place, the choice is six books. Once a book is placed here, then there'll be five more left, right? And so again, so therefore, out of the six experiments, I am just saying that what are the possible outcomes. So, once I have chosen two books here, then uh, I have I am left with uh, picking out uh, the book for the third place from among the remaining four books and then 3, 2 and 1. So, the total number uh, is 6 factorial, which is 720. Right. Now, these 720 arrangements are known as permutations of the six books and the permutation word is essentially saying that uh, the permutations are the ordered arrangements of the books. Now, now, by order I mean that if I am writing say for example, uh, ordered arrangement I want to say. Ordered arrangement. So, if I am writing here say it could be that I am write I have chosen all the three novels here. Right. And then, of course, let us say mathematics books you have um, D and uh, E. So, maybe you have this and U. Right. Now, if I have the order B arrangement B A C E D P, then you see this arrangement is different from this, because now here the second author, if you call uh, the book by B as the second novel, then the second novel is occupying the first place and this is the first the novel by the first author is occupying the second place. So, here the arrangement and therefore, uh, this, this uh, order is also uh, considered here in this arrangement and therefore, I will say that this uh, is different from this order or this arrangement is different from this order. 
uh, th that arrangement B A C E D P. Okay. So, this is the idea that your 720 permutations are the ordered arrangements of the uh, 6 books. And so, um, how you place them depends on uh, that means, I am distinguishing between which author is occupying the first place, which author is occupying the second place and so on. So, therefore, this way it will be 720, but if you do not distinguish between the if you do not distinguish between the uh, authors, that means, I just treat the three novels as novels and in that case, this and this arrangement would be the same. right? And in fact, you can see how many possible arrangements, see I can have here C A B E D P. Now, you can tell me three more, because these three letters A B C themselves, I can arrange in three factorial ways that will be six, 6 ways I can arrange these 3 and therefore, all those arrangements once if I do not consider the, uh, the uh, I disting, do not distinguish between the 3 novels by the authors as long as they are just novels, then that arrangement all those 6 arrangements will be counted as one arrangement. So, um, when we are looking at the arrangement of the books, the novels uh, 3 novels, 2 maths books and 1 physics book. So, once we do not order, uh, we do not worry about the uh, differentiating the books with respect to the authors. In that case, you see as I tried to show you that the three novels, uh, since they will not be distinguished by the authors. So, uh, then um, for every arrangement, for every arrangement in which only the arrangement of the, uh, the um, um, arrangement of the authors has been changed, the other books remain the same. In that case, uh, six of those arrangements will amount to one arrangement, because the three novels can be arranged in six different ways. And if I leave the maths books and the physics book intact, then all six arrangements in which only the uh, arrangements of the uh, novels have been uh, changed, then those six arrangements will amount to one arrangement. And similarly, uh, corresponding to each of those, if I uh, leave everything intact and only disturb the arrangement of the maths books then since I am not differentiating between the authors, those arrangements will not be different, because the two maths books whether uh, the, the author D or E whichever comes first does not matter to me. So, in that case I will then divide. So, that means, when I am counting the arrangement where the order is not important, then that comes out to be a 6 factorial it was the arrangement total number of arrangements uh, where the uh, order was important, but if I do not care about the order or that means, I do not distinguish between the authors. In that case, the arrangements will become 60. So, this is what now I am trying to come to. So, the, uh, the, in the permutations, the order was important and then I said total number of permutations. That means, that the order of the objects was also being considered. Right. So, now, um, the general principle that I am trying to enunciate now that in general number of arrangements of n objects, where n 1 are alike, n 2 are alike and n are alike, n r are alike. That means, there are only r, r different kinds of objects and of since, uh, so therefore, uh, surely here n 1 plus n 2 plus n r adds up to n. Right. So, you have n objects, but n 1 of them are the same, then n 2 are alike and similarly, n r of them are alike. And in that case, when I am wanting to make arrange the n objects, then the total number of objects would be, because n factorial would be the arrangements of n objects, when I am distinguishing between each of them, right? whatever the uh, uh, way of, of distinguishing the objects, whatever it is. So, that was the total arrangement, but since as I tried to show you through this example of arranging the books, that if n 1 are alike, then those n 1 uh, can be arranged in n 1 factorial ways and they will amount to the same arrangement, because I am not differentiating between the order. So, therefore, I uh, will divide this total number of arrangements here by n 1 factorial, n 2 factorial and n r factorial. So, that will give me the total number of, so that becomes the number of combinations, where uh, that means, the arrangements where the order is not important would be the uh, number of total number of uh, combinations. Now, let us look at this example. So, a tennis tournament has 9 co uh, competitors. Okay. Competitors, okay, so, and then three from India, two from Japan, and four from Malaysia. Now, if the results of the tournament are announced by nationalities of the players, 
in the order in which they are placed. So, it is not you know you are not distinguishing the players by their names, only their nationality is being considered. In that case, three from India would be just three Indians and it does not matter which one uh, gets the first position, third position or whatever it is. So, here it will be just all the three players would be considered as players from India. Uh, so, another way of looking at it is that you can think of these three people as one entity, because they, they are just representing the same country. So, similarly two from Japan would be just distinguished by their uh, nationality and not by their names and from, from Malaysia. So, therefore, if you want to now find out the how many such lists are possible, that means, what, what is the uh, arrangement of the uh, position that these three uh, pe uh, the players from three nationalities occupy in your list, you know first, second, third up to there will be nine positions. So, then the total number of um, lists that you can have would be 9 factorial. So, 9 is the total number of players and if I was going to distinguish them by uh, the names, in that case there would have been 9 factorial arrangements of the, um, uh, 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 the way in which the order in which uh, players would uh, uh, occupy a position in the tournament, but uh, since we are not considering the uh, names, we are only considering the nationalities. So, for example, we will then divide this number by 3 factorial, 4 factorial and 2 factorial to get the total number of lists. Okay. So, the 3 Indians can occupy any of the positions and um, uh, they will be the same. So, that means, there are 6, uh, six lists in which if 3 Indians were occupying different positions, uh, in the sense that I just re rearrange the position that are uh, that means, three Indians if they just appear see suppose you consider the first position, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth and same thing here. So, if this was Indian, this is an Indian and let us say this is an Indian right. Now, um, whatever the three names, if I see if you had a name here is say Indian 1, Indian 2 and Indian 3, then I can have Indian 2 here, Indian 1 here. Indian 3 here and this way you can go on right, Indian 2, Indian 3, Indian 1 and just see that you can write, you can rearrange these 3 in 6 possible ways. So, other arrangements remain the same, but if these 3 I can arrange in 6 different ways, but for me they are the same, because in my list it will appear as I, 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 I. So, this will not be there right. So, all these arrangements will be the same. And so, all these 6 arrangements will amount to the same. Therefore, I am dividing this number by 3 factorial and similarly for the 2 from uh, uh, I mean uh, sorry here uh, in this case here, because that was the uh, example for the books. So, here I am dividing this number by 3 factorial, 4 factorial and 2 factorial to get the possible number of lists. So, just trying to make the concept of counting clear, so that you can uh, then you know when you have to compute the uh, possibility uh, of the occurrence of an event, all these things will come in handy. Okay. So, now um, again I am trying to enunciate this principle that if you have a collection of n objects, in how many ways can we select r objects? That is again the same thing, because you can say that you can put the uh, n objects in a row and then you are picking up r out of them. So, that uh, that is a different arrangement that is another way of saying the same thing. right? So, here by our principle of counting, uh, when you have you can say that you have arranged all these n objects in a row and then you are uh, picking up one of them. So, then for the uh, first place that means, when I want to pick up r objects from this list of n objects, the first object there are n possible ways of selecting the first. So, we are counting the same thing again by a different way. So, here you have uh, n ways of selecting the first object, then since you have already selected the first object, you are left with now n minus 1 ways of selecting the second object. right? And similarly, you, it goes on depleting and finally, for the rth object that you want to choose, you are left with n minus r plus 1, because you have already selected r minus 1 objects. So, n minus r minus 1, this is the number. So, this many ways you can select the rth object. right? Now, um, since uh, it does not matter again, because I am not distinguishing between the r objects. That means, the order is not important. Once you see out of these n objects, I have collected r objects. So, it does not matter which one came out first, which one came out second, as long as the set of objects is the same. 
So, that means, my way of selecting may have been you know because I picked when I picked up the first object that counted as the first object, second and so on, but then finally, what I have with me is the set of R objects and it the in, in that set the third or the fourth object could have been selected first does not matter right. So, therefore, what we are saying is now you have n minus r plus 1. So, that means, the total number I should have written the number here let me write uh, somewhere here. Uh, so, the order is when the order is immaterial I am saying that this is let me let me just write it here. So, that means, what I am saying is that the first object I could pick in any of the n ways, then for the second object to pick up, I had only n minus 1 choices available with me and so on up to n minus r plus 1. Right. So, this number and since um, what we are saying is that the um, it was not important the order in which the r objects were selected, it is only the um, final subset of r objects that I have with me. So, therefore, I will divide this by r factorial and so you can write this number you see if you have up to this, this number you can write as n factorial divided by r factorial n minus r factorial. So, this is the final. So, that means, this is the number of combinations I can have because by selecting r objects I can call an arrangement that was here. That means, the n objects that I have, I pick up r, I put them first and then the remaining n minus r. So, essentially uh, the r objects that you pick, it does not matter in what order you pick. So, therefore, uh, the, or the, uh, the total number of ways in which I can arrange my n objects gets divided by r factorial and obviously, the last n minus r objects also, the, uh, the order is not important because finally, you have divided these n objects into r and n minus r. right? So, it is simply uh, which r objects get selected, it does not matter in what order they got selected. So, therefore, the total number of ways in which you can pick up r objects from n objects would again be given by this number and I would normally we say n choose r this is the uh, notation for this number n factorial divided by r factorial n minus r factorial. So, this is n choose r. So, um, again let us take up an example. So, a jury of 7 is to be formed from a group of 30 people. How many different juries can be formed? So, just carry over the uh, what we discussed uh, just now. So, uh, there are 30 people and you have to uh, pick up 7 people from uh, this set of 30 people, which will form a jury. right? And so, you want to know how many the question is how many different juries can be formed. So, this is like we discussed uh, n objects you want to pick up r objects from there and how many ways are there, how many possible combinations are there that is what we are looking at. So, uh, obviously, you can see that the number of juries would be. Uh, so, first first per person in the set can be chosen out of the 30 people. Then once you have chosen that person, you are left with 29 choices. Then again after these two, you are left with 28 and so on. So, this number is 24. And now, what we are saying is that it was, it was not um, at all important as to when we have selected the 7 people. Since, this is a subset of 7 people, it does not matter which one of them got selected first. So, the order is not important. It is only that finally, I have this subset of 7 people. So, therefore, uh, the 7 uh, we will have to divide by 7 factorial to get the possible number of juries, because this 7 set of people that you are forming the jury, uh, the uh, you are not looking at when the first uh, when the uh, in what order they got selected that is not important. right? And that is what I am emphasizing again and again that the here the order of selection is not uh, important. Uh, it is just that we want this subset of 7 people and therefore, this will be the total number of arrangements. And so, here with this number you can write because this is up to 24. Remember, this is n minus r plus 1. So, here your n is 30 and your <coughs> r is 7. So, when you want to divide uh, from 36, you are left with 24. And so, uh, this is the total number. If it was important as to in what order the uh, people got selected for the jury. Since, it is not important, 
it is not con being uh, is considered uh, it is immaterial. So, therefore, I divide by 7 factorial and this number can be written as 30 factorial divided by 7 factorial into, into 23 factorial, which uh, our by our notation is 30 choose 7. Okay. Now, in case the group of 30 consists of 10 women and 20 men and if it is required and if it is required that two women and five men should form the jury. So, now we are saying that out of the 10 women, two must get selected and out of the 20 men, five men should get selected to form the jury. So, in that case, the number of groups of women that you can form out of you know by choosing two out of 10, this will be 10 choose two. Here again, the order is not important. I just want to Form, uh, select a subset of two people, two women from out of the 10. So, that will be a total number of ways in which I can select uh, the uh, two women from the 10 women. And similarly, I can uh, 20 choose 5 is the number of ways in which I can select 5 men from the uh, set of 20 men. And so, the total number would be, because for each subset that I choose here of women, there will be this many. Uh, so, I am now using here my uh, general, generalized principle of counting. And so, the total number of ways in which I can, uh, the number of juries of two women and five men can be formed is this. Okay. So, uh, uh, just uh, through examples, I am trying to make the concept clear. And now, let us see that um, you can, all of you have used binomial theorem and you know that if you want to x plus y, if you want to expand this number x plus y raise to n, then the formula is n choose k x raise to k y raise to n minus k and um, you have done it by induction and so on uh, the proof. Now, let me give you this combinatorial proof of binomial theorem using this concept of counting that we have learnt here. Uh, we can uh, use this and show that uh, uh, the expansion of this term can be written in this way. And so, let me consider the product x 1 plus y 1 into x 2 plus y. So, there are n terms here. right? Now, when I am multiplying each term here final in the product would be consisting of n factors, a factor of n of the x i's and y j's. That means, each pro, each term of this project product will contain uh, when you count the number of x i's and y j's that total number would be n, because you have n factors. right? But oh, so, certainly, in any factor, uh, the, when you look at the x i's and y j's, if the if if uh, an x i appears, then the same uh, index will not be for y, because you see x 1 and y 1 are in the same term here. So, therefore, when I multiply, either I will be multiplying x 1 by the other terms, and so then y 1 will not appear in that. right? So, therefore, in any product, uh, you the, the the x i's and y j's that you have, if an x i appears, the corresponding y j, y i will not appear in that product, right? So in other words, what am I saying? That uh, the n, uh, the uh, any uh, term of this product which will contain, let's say, k of the x i's and then the remaining n i n minus k of the y j's would be such that so you are choosing essentially each term here would contain, let us say, when I am looking at uh, the term containing only k of the x i's and so remaining n minus k are y j's. So, then uh, how many ways can be there? How many such products can be there? In which, so uh, you know this is uh, containing, uh, the, the each term in this product has n factors containing x i's and y j's. So, then if I am looking at all the terms which contain k of the x i's, right, then that means I am out of the x 1, x 2, x n these n x's, I am choosing k of the x i's. Right? And then of course, um, the moment I choose my k x i's, then the y j's got the n minus k y k's, y j's got get selected automatically, because the ones uh, which are not appearing in my x 1, x 2, the, uh, the product of x, x i's that I have taken, the remaining indices will be, will go to the y j's. Right? So, here uh, that means, and that uh, way is the way of choosing k x i's out of the n x i's x 1, x 2, x n is n, n choose k. right? So, therefore, uh, the, the, the number of terms which contain k of the x i's is this many terms. And so, this whole product either uh, what will happen see for example, if you look at the product y 1, y 2, y n, no x i appears. So, either, so the k can vary from 0 to n. 
the, uh, uh, the terms will contain either 0 x i s, then 1 x i, 2 x i s and so on. So, you want to add up all such things. So, you want counting the total number of terms in this product and that, that uh, total number will be given by summing up n choose k from uh, 0 to n. And when you ch choose like this, then that means your um, k of the x i s are here and n minus k are here, you are adding up. right? So, this thing then I put, put x i equal to x for all i and y j equal to y for all j. So, in that case your uh, k of the x i's that you took from here, they all become equal to x. So, x raise to k, y raise to n minus k. So, then therefore, this product and when one you put the x i's together uh, equal y i's all together, then this whole product coincides with this. And so, you have a nice way of uh, you know proving the binomial theorem. Okay. Now, um, I can immediate application of this is that if you want to count, you have n objects and you want to count how many subsets can be there of these n objects. You know, uh, and of course, the empty set also we consider as a subset. That means, nothing gets chosen from the uh, n objects. So, you can have subsets consisting the empty set, then you can have subsets consisting of only one element from one object from these n objects, subsets containing two objects, three objects and so on. So, if you want to count the total number of uh, subsets that you can form of these n objects, then since I told you that uh, n c k gives you the number of subsets of size k. right? And so, uh, you want to count this number n c k from k varying from 0 to n. And which if you look at this expansion here, essentially you are putting x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. So, that this all becomes 1 and so you are summing up. So, on this side when you put x equal to 1 and y equal to 1, this reduces to 2 raise to n. So, the total number of subsets, this is another uh, nice way of uh, counting the number of subsets that you can form uh, given n objects. So, extending this concept that I just uh, enumerated for you for the binomial theorem, now we can take over uh, go up to multinomial coefficients. So, this is a set of n distinct objects is to be divided into r distinct groups of sizes n 1, n 2, n r. For the binomial theorem, r was 2. So, now it is n 1 plus n 1, n 2, n r, where of course, all the n i s add up to n. So, I am dividing these n objects into r sub groups and the size of each group, the first sub group is n 1, size of the second group is n 2 and so on. Right. So, then um, using the same principle, I want to choose from n, n 1 possible groups. So, the, the number of possible groups of size n 1 is n n 1. N, n choose n 1, right? or you also write this as actually, this is also written as n c n 1. So, combinations, so uh, n 1 combination that means, you want to choose n 1 objects out of n. So, what are the possible number of ways? So, any of these notations is acceptable, fine. So, uh, the first group will be the number of uh, groups of sizes n 1 uh, would be n choose n 1. Then since I have already chosen n 1 objects out of n. So, then I want to choose the second set of objects uh, n 2 uh, consisting of the, the, the set of objects must be n 2 in size. And then, so out of n minus n 1, I want to choose n 2. So, the, for each group of size n 1, the number of choices of the second group is n minus n 1 choose n 2. right? And so, you extend this concept and so finally, uh, the last choice would be, because now you will be left with n minus n 1 minus n 2 minus n r minus 1, r minus 1 subsets or subgroups have already been chosen. So, then this many you are left and out of this you want to choose n r objects. So, again the uh, number of possible ways is uh, n minus n 1 n 2 minus n r minus 1 choose n r. right? And so, we will say that the total number of groups is the product of all these. right? And so, um, by a notation, this will be the first one would be n factorial divided by n 1 factorial, n minus n 1 factorial. Then, the second one would be n minus n 1 factorial divided by n 2 factorial, n minus n 1 minus n 2 factorial and so on. So, if you see that, this will be my uh, total expression and then the terms cancel out, because you have n minus n 1 factorial here and this is n minus n 1 factorial. So, it cancels out. So, these terms will cancel out 
you know in pairs. And so, at, in the denominator you will be left with n 1 factorial, n 2 factorial, n r uh, n 3 factorial up to n r factorial. And this is what again, what we are saying is that we are deciding whatever uh, uh, sub uh, objects we are putting in one group, we are saying they are all alike, the same principle you are using. And so, we the uh, their uh, arrangements will not matter in whatever way you choose, in whatever order you choose is immaterial. So, therefore, uh, again I am I can arrange my possible objects n objects in n factorial ways, but since I am sub uh, I am uh, grouping them uh, into r different subgroups and each group the number of objects is uh, 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 we are not differentiating between the objects in one group. So, then the total number of ways would be n factorial divided by n verse factorial n 2 factorial and n r factorial right. And now, this helps us to uh, expand for example, th this gives the multinomial theorem that if you want to expand x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 plus x r raised to n, then it will be because remember in this product just as I showed you for the binomial theorem, uh, you want to choose. So, uh, because each product here will consist of some uh, powers of x 1, some powers of x 2, some powers of x 3 and x r. And so, here I am now saying that um, these n 1, n 2, n r will vary from, because every product here will contain 0 x 1, 1 x 1, 2 x 2, 2, 2 x 1 and so on and different. That means, whatever the powers each term here, you can see uh, in the fact in the product, uh, these terms will appear and so your n 1 plus n 2 plus n r must be because each term if this is raised to n. So, each term in this expansion will contain n x i s together. So, that means, you add up the indices of x 1, x 2, x r, they should add up to n and that is what is uh, given by this. right? So, therefore, um, using this concept, this is how you can write the expansion. right? And uh, if you look at this example, where x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 raised to 3, then you see I can choose my n 1 to be 3. So, that means, uh, this subset contains just the x, uh, component, uh, the powers of x 1, powers of x 2 and x 3 are missing here. right? So, therefore, the expansion uh, this is 3, 3, 0, 0, uh, x 1 raised to 3. Then uh, here again, you are choosing a subset from 3, which consists only of powers of x 2. So, 0 3 0 and so this will be x 2 3. Right. So, I showed you the uh, you know the idea behind this and then now I am using it repeatedly to say that how you can write the expansion of this. Right. And so, therefore, um, you can see that uh, the way I can uh, choose my numbers n 1, n 2, n r such that they add up to n. So, in the case when you have your r is 3 and your n is also 3. So, then these numbers must add up to 3 right. You are dividing your number 3 in uh, 3 possible ways. So, that uh, they add up to 3. So, here uh, these are the possible right and the final thing is 3 1 1 1 when, when each x 1, x 2, x 3 has only power 1. So, this is the expansion and now in, in, in the assigned exercise sheet that we will just show you, I am asking you how many terms are there uh, in, the, in the multinomial expansion. And remember, because uh, which is actually counting the number of subsets right here, uh, essentially you are counting the number of subsets that you can have, uh, you know like you, you have r this thing here. Um, x 1, x 2, x 3, x r. So, essentially my question is, how many terms are there in this expansion? And so, I have already discussed this case with you for the binomial, how I used for uh, answering the number of subsets of uh, total number of subsets of n objects. So, here you have to use the same concept and tell me how, uh, uh, how many terms are there in this multinomial expansion. Okay. So, let me just uh, show you the uh, discuss the uh, uh, exercise sheet. Question, question 1 is straightforward, 18 workers are to be assigned to 18 different jobs. So, the important part here is that each job is different from the others and therefore, um, uh, this will be an ordered arrangement of the 18 workers. So, you can write down how many possible assignments are possible. That means, uh, uh, an assignment would mean that you assign one particular worker to a particular job. So, then how many ways can you do this? 
this is the idea here. right? Now, consider a group of 25 people, if everyone shakes hands with everyone else, how many handshakes take place? So, that means that if a person shakes hands with another person, then both have shaken hands with each other. So, just keep that in mind and you can immediately write down what the answer will be for number 2. Now, here in question 3, 4 separate awards, you can, it can be you know somebody getting the highest marks, the highest cumulative performance index, best sportsman, leadership quality etcetera. So, you can have 4 different uh, awards given to these uh, to st uh, students and the idea is to um, select from a class of 36 students, students who can be given this award. Now, in case a student can receive any number of awards, then it will be a different uh, number of arrangements that you can have or different ways in which the four awards can be uh, given to a student or more than one student. But in number 1, the condition is that the student can receive any number of awards. So, you have to do a counting in that way. So, in number 2, we say each student can receive at most one award. So, that means, either a student receives an award or a student does not receive an award. So, this, this is the way you have to count. Now, in question 4 is interesting, using combinatorial argument prove that n choose r, that means selecting r items from n items is equal to selecting r minus 1 items from n minus 1 plus selecting r items from n minus 1 items. So, you can if you write down the expression for n minus 1 choose r minus 1 and plus n minus 1 choose r, you can show that these two add up to n choose r, right. But I want you to give a combinatorial argument and you can see here in the first term it says n minus 1 choose r minus 1. That means, I am keeping away one particular uh, object or item from the n th that are there, then I am selecting r minus 1. So, that means, uh, the first um, set of numbers n minus 1 choose r minus 1 gives you the uh, number of ways in which you can pick up r minus 1 objects from n minus 1, when a particular object is been selected. So, when you add that to this selected group, then it will become r objects from n objects. Now, the second one says that n minus 1 choose r, that means that particular see the thing is that either uh, a part the particular object or item that you have picked is either there in a collection of r objects or it is not there. So, uh, the first case says that yes, it is going to be in that collection of r objects. So, once you add it to this set of r minus 1 objects that you have selected, then it becomes r. Now, in the second one, what you are saying is this is a set of, of uh, this is the uh, set of um, selections in which that particular object does not appear. So, you have separated that object then from the remaining n minus 1 you are choosing r. So, this is the kind of combinatorial argument you are giving to prove the identity. And so, you see I have already shown you that uh, you can uh, by combinatorial arguments you can give show you prove the binomial theorem. Now, similarly you can try to prove a uh, number of such identities through combinatorial arguments. Okay. Then question 5 we have already discussed in how many ways can r objects be selected from a set of on n objects, if the order of selection is also to be considered. Right. So, question 6, one delegate each from 10 countries that include delegates from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka are to be seated in a row. Okay. So, the arrangement has to be in a row. Now, delegates from India and Sri Lanka are to be seated next to each other and delegates from Bangladesh and Pakistan are not to be seated together. How many seating arrangements are possible? So, the idea here is that you know you, you have 10 different uh, positions people are sitting in a row and uh, you want people uh, delegates from India and um, uh, Sri Lanka to be seated together, right? which means that I can treat those two as one person. In that case, it will be uh, 9 people then who have to be arranged, because Shri, uh, delegate from India and delegate from Sri Lanka have to be together. So, that means the total arrangements is 9 factorial, but since the people are sitting in a row, that means uh, the arrangement that first uh, the Indian delegate is sitting and then the Sri Lankan or uh, the uh, Sri Lankan is delegate is sitting first and then the Indian. So, this will count as 2 different arrangements. And therefore, the total number of arrangements would be 2 into 9 factorial, in which the um, delegates from India and Sri Lanka are together. 
now you do not want people uh, delegates from uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan to be sitting together. So, now again uh, consider the situation when they are sitting together. So, we will subtract the number of. So, in that case uh, if you now look at the um, arrangements in which uh, delegates from India and Sri Lanka are together and delegates from Bangladesh and Pakistan are together, then uh, you know you will have 8 different positions uh, to arrange, because these 2 delegates will be together that means that, that they can be treated as 1 person. right? And therefore, um, uh, it will be total number of arrangements would be 8 factorial, but then um, again you have to the, it can be 2 possible. Uh, you know like uh, as I told you the arrangement can be India, Sri Lanka or Sri Lanka, India. Similarly, it can be Bangladesh, Pakistan, Pakistan, ba Bangladesh. So, therefore, essentially uh, you will be subtracting from 2 into 9 factorial the number of arrangements uh, in which uh, all the 4 dele I mean uh, delegates from Bangladesh and Pakistan are together and delegates from India and Sri Lanka are together. So, that will be 2 square into 8 factorial. And so, you subtract this number from 2 into 9 factorial that should give you the required uh, uh, number of people, uh, number of ways in which you can uh, have the required arrangement. How many terms are there in the multinomial expansion of x 1 plus x 2 plus x r raised to n? So, here again I am wanting you to do this exercise. See the whole idea uh, the way I explained to you this expansion was that you are essentially dividing your number n into r smaller numbers n 1, n 2, n r such so that they sum up to n. So, in how many ways can you partition this uh, set of n numbers into r subsets, so that they all add up to n. This is the whole idea and so, um, you will see that uh, from this identity x 1 plus x 2 plus x r raised to n, you have to put all these x 1, x 2, x r equal to 1 and so, you get r raised to n is equal to the number of terms that appear in the expansion, multinomial expansion of this term. right? Then um, finally, a total of 6 gifts are to be distributed among 9 children, so that no child receives more than 1 gift. This is exactly the same as uh, you know part, uh, part 2 of 3, right? because here also we said that uh, uh, no student should get more than 1 award, at, should get at most 1 award. And so, here also we are saying that a total of 6 gifts are to be distributed among 9 children, so that no child receives more than 1 gift. Okay. Thank you.